Hi, and welcome back to Ask DRTK. Today, I'm going to take a look at something many of us have been waiting for for a long time. It's an HDMI 2.1 8K variable refresh rate splitter with built-in 2x1 switch. It's the O-Ray BK22. Let's check it out. In the interest of transparency, O-Ray did send me this switch splitter, but I wasn't required to make a review. O-Ray had no input on this video. The tests and opinions here are my own. And in fact, O-Ray will see this video at the same time you do. As you know from watching previous reviews, I don't recommend products that I haven't tested or use myself. Now I've already spent considerable time testing out this unit, but I will turn back the clock and unbox it for you. Then we'll take a look at the features and specs. Just what is this O-Ray 8K splitter switch supposed to do? Then I'll get into the input test. We'll switch back and forth between two inputs, one 4K from a PC, the other 1080p from a component to HDMI converter. So a really you know, difficult combination, if you will. Then we'll get into some actual game capture. And what I've done is I've captured some games from both the PC again and an Xbox 360 connected in through a SunEdge converter. And what I've done is set that out side by side on screen for you so you can see what it looks like when I have the source connected directly into my Elgato 4K60 capture card versus what it's like when I insert the O-Ray splitter between the source and the capture card. So we'll see if it affects the color of the image in any way. And I actually have some analysis to look at. We'll also take a look at the audio and see if there's any difference in the audio when it passes through the unit. After that, I'll go through a quick list of what I actually tested. And I did quite a few extensive tests on the most difficult use cases for this, really what we'd want it for. Again, it's HDMI 2.1. And then I'll finish up with some final thoughts. And we'll go ahead and unbox the O-Ray BK22. Again, this is an HDMI 2.1 splitter, sports up to 8K60. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, get the uh, splitter out itself. So uh, first of all, very heavy when you take it out. This is, uh, this is quite a solid unit uh, by feel of weight anyways. All metal construction here. On, uh, on the front, we have some indicators for inputs and outputs, as well as a switch and service port. The back has the uh, dual in and dual out HDMI, uh, as well as vents on either side. So really good first impression. That's a pretty solid feeling unit. Then we get the power adapter. I can see it's been removed from the plastic. This unit was sent directly to me by O-Ray, so I'd imagine they might have actually tested this out. So we'll just put that off to the side. Now uh, we have the uh, warranty here. It looks like there's an extended warranty, so we'll put that to the side. And finally, an instruction booklet. Hopefully it has some details on how to set that up, as well as uh, the specs. So first impressions, really good. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time reading through the specs for this switch and splitter, but suffice to say it's HDMI 2.1 with a bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second. So that'll pretty much handle any video or audio format that's available today. If you're looking for something specific, pause the video, check out what I have on screen. But otherwise, I think the tests and review coming up will pretty much answer your questions. Now that you've seen what comes in the package, let's get to the first test. Okay, and now I've connected up two sources. I have a PC coming from an RTX 2080, and I also have a Sega Genesis coming in here with an HDMI adapter. And I have them connected into a monitor, just so you can see, starting out on the PC, and when I press the switch, we'll see how long it takes to move over to the other source. And so there is a delay of probably about maybe three seconds, two to three seconds in switching over. I'll press it again to switch back and it shut off and now it moved back over to the PC. And so you're not going to get an instant switch one way back and forth with this. So it's not really intended for live video. But absolutely, I mean, no problem with sync up when I'm switching back and forth. Uh, you know, the, the signal is working uh, just fine in terms of resolution. I have 4K coming in from the computer and 1080p coming in from the Genesis with the adapter. So it not only, uh, you know, did the switch pretty quick, but it also changed resolution. No hesitations on this monitor. This monitor is pretty fast switching it to begin with. But nonetheless, uh, performance switching back and forth between the two different video modes worked uh, worked very well now we'll get into some game footage to see what if any effect this unit has on the signal on the color brightness etc coming through so first up we have pc footage 
This was recorded at 4K60. Now I upload to YouTube at 4K30. So you're going to see 30 on screen here, but this was recorded again in 4K60. And we'll start out with PC having the direct connection on the left. So what you see on the left side of the screen is a PC connected directly into my Elgato 4K60 Mark II. And on the right side of the screen, what I've done is insert the O-Ray 2.1 splitter switch in between the PC source and the Elgato capture card. And so you can see side by side whether there's any visible difference in the image quality. And after capturing the video footage, beyond just looking on screen side by side, I actually did some color analysis in Adobe Premiere. So let's check that out. And so here you're looking at the video analysis on the left from the capture directly from the PC into the Elgato 4K60 card. And on the right, I inserted the O-Ray 8K unit in between the PC and the capture card. And as you can see, looking at the color measurements, there is little to no difference. In fact, without even really blowing these up to a very large size, I can't see any difference in the colors between the two captures. So looking at that, this is telling me that the O-Ray 8K splitter switch passes video through very accurately and really does not change anything in terms of the video going through. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Now we'll do the same thing, only this time I've changed the source up to be the Xbox 360 connected through a Sunatch component to HDMI scalar converter. Let's start out with a side-by-side -side look at the footage. And now that you've had a chance to take a look at the 1080p footage side by side from the Xbox 360, let's take a look at the color analysis in Premiere. And again, looking here on the left, we have the SunAsh converter from the 360 connected directly into the 4K Elgato capture card. And on the right, I've inserted the O-Ray splitter switch in between. And again, there is no perceptible difference in the image that I captured on either side. The color looks identical. Even if I blow these, these graphs up very, very large, the difference is so minimal that it wouldn't be visible, uh, I think, on any monitor and certainly not on uh, anything that I have access to. So again, uh, really, when I look at this, the, uh, the unit did a great job of passing the original signal through without really changing the image. And now that we've taken a look at the video comparisons, let's take a look at audio. And so what I've done here is I've loaded up the game footage audio from the PC into Adobe Audition, both the sample with the direct connection into the Elgato capture card and the one with the O-Ray unit inserted in between the source and the capture card. And as you can see, the frequency looks identical. There really isn't any difference. And so I don't see any frequency changes. Now let's take a look at the dynamics. And here we have the dynamics comparison again between the direct capture and the one through the O-Ray splitter. And we can see here that the dynamics remain unchanged as well. There really is no difference in the audio signal. 
And that also is exactly what I'm looking for in this type of unit. I don't want it to change or alter or interfere with anything with the source going through. So the unit here has performed really well. Now I've spent many hours testing this O-Ray HDMI 2.1 splitter switch, including about 72 hours with a 4K30 signal just running through the unit, just to test for durability, overheating, and there were no issues at all. And while I can't show you all of the tests in this video, what I'll do is I'll go through the modes and the equipment that I did test with it, just so you have an idea of what I can verify does in fact work. And so looking at the table here, I've split it up. First, I did a test using my PC. It has an RTX 2080 Super, and I'm using an Asus ROG Swift. So that's a 4K gaming monitor with up to 144 Hertz. So it really puts it through its paces. I verified that I can get 4K 60, 4K 30 without any issues here. I ran 1440p G-Sync, variable up to 144 Hertz. Also 1080p up to 144 Hertz. Absolutely no issues there. I then took the unit over to a buddy of mine who has an, an AMD system with uh, an RX 6700 and a Samsung 1440p monitor. And we were able to test 1440p up to 144 Hertz free sync, 1080p, same thing up to 144. No issues there whatsoever. Then I went ahead and connected it up through with an Apple TV 4K and I tested HDR10, Dolby Vision, Atmos, and Digital 5.1 and I had no issues with any of these modes or combinations whatsoever. Yes, there are additional modes, 720p, etc., but I couldn't test everything, and I, I really think if they've done a good job with HDMI 2.1, getting all of these really high demand modes in, I'm not too worried about the other signals. I did you know, test a 720p signal through it, but I didn't do any analysis or comparisons to see if there was any difference, but I have to assume based on my other tests that 720p works just fine. And most of you that are gonna be purchasing this unit aren't really interested in running 720p, much less even 1080. You're probably looking for 4K and maybe 8K in the future. And before I give you my final thoughts, let me just quickly tell you a little bit about the build quality. This is very well made. This is a solid metal box. There is no flex, no issues whatsoever here. It has ventilation on either side, so no issues with overheating. Again, I ran this for 72 hours straight, 4K going through it, no overheating at all. The uh, ports on the unit, in terms of the HDMIs, you know, when I take a plug in and out of this here, this is solid. The ports are solid. They, they are mounted in such a way that they are not weak. Nothing is going to give you an issue here. The only thing I might say is that the power connection is not a locking connection. It's just a barrel insert. And so it could conceivably come unplugged. You know, it does have a switch on the front, so you may be, uh, you know, pushing this button to switch between inputs. So just be aware that it's not a locking power. But otherwise, I mean, this unit is solid and very well made. Now, I've been waiting for a long time for manufacturers to really start supporting HDMI 2.1. There's enough devices out there now where I think many of us will have a use for this splitter and switch. And so let me give you my final thoughts after all the tests and time that I've spent. First, I have to say that this unit is very well made. It is solid. I have absolutely no complaints about the construction. The quality seems very good. Of course, I haven't had the unit for months or for a year to let you know what it's like in the long term, but I did do a 72-hour burn-in test on it and had no issues with overheating or otherwise. Second, when it comes down to the video and audio, this unit is transparent. There aren't going to be any changes made to your audio or video signals going through it on any of the modes that I tested. And that's really something I look for in any sort of device that I'm gonna insert into an audio or video chain. So really, really well done. And for the price, I think this unit's about 80 US dollars at the time of recording. This is just a fantastic example of what can be done with an HDMI 2.1 product. You know, it doesn't have to be thousands of dollars to get great performance. And so I must say that I am actually really impressed with this unit. I didn't know what to expect in this price range and given HDMI 2.1 adoption has been fairly slow. So, uh, you know, again, really, really pleased with what I see here. And so based on my tests, would I recommend the O-Ray 8K HDMI 2.1 splitter switch? Absolutely yes. Grab one if you can. I think they might actually even be sold out as I'm recording this video. Hopefully they'll get back into stock soon. 
But if you have a need for HDMI 2.1, you have variable refresh rate, you're using a PS5, Xbox Series X, PC gaming, anything where you need high performance, this is gonna get the job done for you. Now, if you're into audio and video gear, recording, streaming, gaming, check out one of the other videos on the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.